of the blue line, that's the AND array. This is the OR array on that side of the blue line. And now this red line here, that's the OR, and this is the output logic. Because if we remember right, in our block diagram, we've got our programmable AND, our fixed OR, and our output logic. So red line, blue line, right there. OK, so that was our combinational logic where we've got an active high and active low, and we can disconnect it. Um, additionally, this is a really super cool feature um, that was, we have a, basically you can feed your output back to your input. So if you can imagine what's looking, it's going to get messy here. Well, here, here's, a, here's our OR. Here's our active high, or excuse me, active low output. What you can do, that's X. You can actually feed that guy back in. That's, and that's basically through another input input buffer. That's going back in to there, so you can reuse those things. Um, you can also use that as an input. You can uh, you can feed the output back to the input, or you can use this as an input. Um, last thing for output uh, output logic is your polarity. Remember from lab four and five from the Floyd book our selective inversion feature for an exclusive OR. Let's say if this is our output right here coming out, you can feed it into an exclusive OR where one leg is grounded to zero. And if this is what our output normally would look like, that's signal X. And if that exclusive OR is at ground right here, zero volts. What's going to come out at this point right here? Well, one and zero, they're different. So that's a one, because exclusive OR is only high when they're different. Zero and zero, that's a zero. It's going to look exactly like the signal. But now check this out, is when this thing when the exclusive OR that fuse right there is blown open and this is a plus 5 volts what's happening here if we remember from our lab 4 and 5 in the Floyd book 1 and 1 they're the same so you get a 0 zero and one they're different so you get a high what you get is a selectively inverted waveform so that our exclusive or is acting you know basically is your selective inversion your polarity switcher okay there's a diagram of the pal 16 l8 on page 235 basically it shows it's got 10 dedicated inputs eight outputs two of which are dedicated outputs and six of them you can use an input or an output. So that's why the 16 is in there. So you can have up to 16 inputs. Um, and it's an active low output. That's what the L means. So, um, you know, basic PALs, you're going to have at least eight inputs and you're going to have less than eight outputs. Okay. So the GAL, let's talk about this here. It's the only thing different between a GAL and a PAL is this, well, the big thing is this reprogrammable AND array. And then our output's slightly different too. Output logic's slightly different. So reprogrammable is, remember before we were dealing with our lines where there's a fuse that is OTP, one-time programmable. It's there and it's blown. And when you blow it, you can never, ever get it back. Well, check this out. With a gal, there's this device in here called the E squared CMOS, E squared CMOS. And you guys, I don't think you've gotten to transistors yet in uh, your E2221 class, but just think of this as a reprogrammable fuse right now. It's not, but it's it's a series of transistors that are can connect or disconnect. And so what's happening here is when this E squared CMOS is turned on, there's a connection when it's turned 
off, there's no connection. Okay, same thing with the diagrams, basically exact same thing with the diagrams, where you've got an input buffer and you've simplified it, where this is a three input AND gate, just draw an X where the E squared CMOS is on. When it's off, there is no connection. Okay, so that is kind of the internal workings of the gal, and you can just reprogram these on and off as much as you want to. And they can hold these on states for up to 20 years. Pretty cool, huh? All right, so what is the output logic? Over here, we talked about they're slightly different. This is our OLMC. It still has the combinational logic, which we talked about earlier, where you can have an active high, and active low, your selective inversion, and you can feed input back. But there's another thing here where that's combinational. It's got all those features, but it also has this registered logic, registered output logic. What is a register? It's data storage. So it makes it a little bit more powerful device. You're using some, some bit of memory in there. And we'll actually go into the details of what that memory is in terms of flip-flops on chapter eight. So just a brief rediscussion of the PAL and the GAL. This concludes chapter four.